Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Bruni here with Go247 covering LSU and today we're going to be introducing the YouTube page. So first, welcome. Welcome to the page. We'll be doing a lot of stuff on here. Uh, podcast analysis, uh, videos like this, maybe live streams every now and then as well just to interact, maybe some Q&As. Uh, got a lot of stuff planned for, for this YouTube page so we're excited to get it started here. Uh, today uh, we're going to be looking at Cam uh, Thomas and his performance in the summer league up to this point specifically talking about his game uh today on wednesday it is wednesday um when the brooklyn nets took on the milwaukee bucks i just wanted to highlight a couple things that i saw from camp thomas some things that i think may be important to some lsu fans that have been uh just watching him over the past year and a half or so uh just as they follow him into his uh, nba journey Quickly, before we get started into that, though, uh, Trenton Watford uh, is, is playing for the Portland Trailblazers. He had a good first game, had a I had an all right second game, had three points, five assists, five rebounds um, as the Trailblazers beat the Clippers uh, last night on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, the Heat, I was looking for Javante Smart. Uh, he played about 20 minutes in the first game for the Heat, but in game two, um, on Wednesday, he did not get any minutes, so I don't know exactly what to make of that. Maybe he was hurt. Maybe it was a DNP from coach's decision. I don't know. Uh, they are playing Dejan Giroux from Houston at the starting point guard right now, and I think there's you know some more mil- minutes to allocate if they want to. So, But let's get into Cam Thomas first and foremost. I mean, He started off the game one of six from the field. He was taking some tough shots. A lot of his stuff was off of the catch and isolation, which he can do very well, as we know from his time at LSU. But now that you're going against bigger defenders, usually better defenders, you want it to be a little more in rhythm actions. You know what I mean? And so he was taking stuff kind of out of rhythm, those long twos that he likes taking, uh, maybe some even step back threes, and he just wasn't making them at the clip that we're expecting to make them at. However... One thing about Cam Thomas that I personally love, and this is something small that might feel like it's just kind of, I'm making it up or something, but his misses do not miss by very much. Like, his misses hit the front of the iron, back of the iron, like bounce up, like have a chance to go in on the second bounce. Like, they are close, close misses. You won't see him really miss shots really bad to where you're like, whoa, how did he just like only hit the backboard or something like that? You know, he is a score in almost every sense of the word his touch is just tremendous and but in the first half he was taking just really difficult shots out of rhythm and you could tell it's taken him a little while to kind of get adjusted to the pace of the NBA to the playing off ball a little bit more but obviously at LSU he played off ball for spurts but at the end of the day it would always come back to him you know it wasn't like it wasn't like there would be like three possessions in a row where he didn't touch the ball, right? And um, now he's having to get adjusted to that. I mean, they have Brandon Knight on the team. They have a couple of good Quinjerry Weatherspoons, a solid player as well. They have some good guards on this team that are kind of taking the lead ball handling role. And for him as a two guard, preferably, I think, in the NBA, he's going to have to get used to kind of catching and attacking with quickness. He did it on a couple of on a couple of occasions, and but it really didn't start until the second half. When the second half came, that's where he was like, all right, enough of these jumpers, at least for the time being. Got downhill, um, got fouled. Uh, he did have a one real, the one make that he did have in the first half was a really nice four point play um, where he just, he's just such a good shooter that you just trust him in all situations to be able to make those types of plays. Um, and I think I'll have a video up of it while I'm talking here. But still, in the second half, he didn't settle for those, right? In the second half, he was able to get downhill. He got in transition a little bit, and he was able to get some assist as well. So he ends the game with 22 points, four assists, two rebounds, three turnovers. Um, and he played pretty much the entire second half because I think at that point, he was significantly better than Brandon Knight. He was significantly better than Witherspoon. And he led the team in scoring. And it wasn't just his scoring, but it was how he kind of dictated the pace. It's how he dictated the tempo. And it's how he, I mean, he played off a couple ball screens, played in transition. He was able, his crossover move and his crossover step back creates so much separation that defenders kind of jump at him when he gets that step back. And then he just goes, right? We, we've seen, we saw it at LSU last year where he can just kind of create that hesitation, boom, cross, then just go. And he gets to the rim really nicely. He was able to create really well, which I think is the next evolution in his game is creating um, for others. 
I don't think he's there yet still, even though he did have four assists. I think there are still a lot of moments where he's getting comfortable. Um, the defense, the Bucks look to trap him on occasion off a of ball screen, and he really didn't like that as well, which a lot of guards, young guards don't. But that is an area where I think he can improve as well, just overall passing, overall seeing the court, and overall uh, court vision, because I don't think that's something that he's had to do a lot of in his time, right? I mean, he didn't do it a lot at LSU. He didn't do it a lot, I'm sure, in high school. Like, he's always just been a scorer, and he can score the ball. Like, that that's not a question. He can score the ball. But at the, at the next level, as he continues to get more minutes, he'll have to create for others as well. So we'll see how he develops in that aspect. Um, I did mention on Twitter, and if you follow me on Twitter, I was kind of live tweeting the game, kind of just referring to the board. Um, but basically, I said that his defense is going to kind of define his value early on. And that might be a hyperbole because obviously his value is scoring, but his defense will get him on the court. And I think that's not a hyperbole. I think that's a fact. His defense is what needs to be at the level where it's at least playable, right? He can't be getting attacked. He cannot be out here lackadaisical. He can't be out here flat-footed. He has to be a player who's on his toes, who's active, and who has the athleticism to block shots and contest shots at a very high level. I don't. I didn't see a lot of that. I didn't see a lot of defensive intensity from him. And granted, he wasn't guarding the other team's best players. He wasn't guarding the other team's lead ball handlers. So he was playing off ball a lot. But it was a lot of flat-footed movements, and that's where I think he can kind of get played off the court in a sense, uh, especially with the team with the aspiration that the Nets have. Like, if we're looking for him to contribute this year, the defense needs to be significantly better than what it was tonight. And um, obviously, a lot of rookies will struggle with defense, but the the effort is kind of something that I'm going to be looking forward to seeing from him and if he can continue to improve that uh just throughout the season because you're on a team with James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin. You have enough scoring here. They don't need you to come in and score, although, I mean, it's what he does. And if he plays, it'll be the score. I'm not saying he can't score or will not be asked to score, but it has to be more than that, right? Like, you're going to be on the court, like, presumably if all the nets are healthy. And, we're again, we're looking at him to play this year, and uh, Durant just signed an extension for that team, so he will be there for the foreseeable future. I'm assuming they're going to keep that big three intact. This year or next, to get on the court, you're going to be on the court with one or two of Kyrie Irving and James Harden and Kyrie Kevin Durant. They don't need you to turn into Monte Ellis right now. They don't need you to take six shots in five minutes. They don't need that. So, you know, it's finding your role and it's figuring out how you want to do it. I think a playmaking, I think his playmaking will be a big determin, determ, determinant terminant in his uh playing time early on in his career because if he's just kind of head down scorer i don't know how much playing time that's going to contribute maybe that's eight to ten minutes a game that'd be great for a first year player but if we're look if we're looking at late in the season i'm not even gonna say playoffs because playoffs is such a big jump in competition but you know if we're looking at an end of the season player and maybe fourth quarter type player then he's gonna have to round out his game a bit but the scoring is just unequivocally spectacular and that is something that not a lot of players can say like this is a guy who is going to be one of the top scorers from this class along with Jalen Green and maybe Kay Cunningham depending on how he pans out I mean you're looking at a guy who can just fill it up right away like I I I don't think it'll take long for him to average double digits in the NBA it might be year two like again it depends on the scenario here if he was on a really bad team he might be averaging double digits this year who knows but you know there's a lot of his game that i want to fill out there's a lot of his game that i really want to um come along and he's a young guy obviously only played one year at lsu so i'm excited to see how he can develop i did see a little bit of javante smart in the last game i didn't see a ton of him uh just to kind of move on to that again if you followed um my post on the board, I kind of said a lot of this on there. It was a VIP board, so check that out. Um, I kind of gave updates throughout the game and his his scoring of Cam Thomas. Javante Smart, I didn't see play. They're in like the fourth quarter. I think they're in the fourth quarter right now, that Heat-Grizzlies game, and he still hadn't played two and a half quarters in. So I kind of just, I don't want to say gave up, but, you know, I kind of gave up to an extent. And so, uh, but Javante Smart, his passing looks like it, is already translating and that's a really good sign i don't know if i don't think he'll the heat roster is very very deep at this point so i think maybe a year in g league would be huge for him kind of like a tremont waters so uh, get him a year in, in the g league and let him develop and let him play from there um but his passing looks like it's there 
obviously can shoot the ball with the best one. That's one thing that really stood out to me from last year. And I, I'm confident that he has the skill sets to make it in the NBA. It's just win, and it's the situation. But yeah, I don't want to keep this too long. I just want to kind of introduce the YouTube page to y'all. I'm really excited to get it going. Obviously, with the podcast stuff, we're going to be doing the the film analysis stuff that we already have planned and stuff like this, you know, just where we're kind of giving y'all a different look, a different way of explaining what we're seeing. And I know Cam Thomas only played a year at LSU, so maybe he's not like, you know, the central figure that a lot of y'all are looking for. I mean, it's not Joe Burrow, obviously, but... Still, this is kind of an intro and also just an intro to get to know me a little bit and how I talk, you know, what I kind of look for in, in a basketball player and a basketball team. So there'll be a lot of this throughout the basketball season as well as the football season. So I'm excited to get going. And yeah, if you don't already, follow, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a like, send it to a friend, and we'll talk to y'all later.